So there's a another uh, garden task I'm kind of diligent at this time of year. Because plants are growing so fast, they're blooming so fast, I really do focus on pinching or deadheading my flowers. That goes for your vegetables too. By, by leaving that zucchini on and it gets ginormous, the plant will actually shut down and it's focused on putting seed into that ginormous, it's almost like a canoe or, or kayak kind of fruit. It's so big. Take those things off, even if you're not going to use them. Just cut them off so the plant can refocus back onto growing more squash or more zucchini or more peppers, more tomatoes, more. Don't leave them on there. Same goes for your flowers. So now flowers like roses, petunias, uh, zinnias. Uh, cosmos, uh, dahlias. These are all things that if when that flower is spent, you want to pinch that off. It doesn't, you don't need scissors or usually just take your thumbnail and pinch them right off because they're still tender. And now that plant, you're just psyching that plant out going, oh my gosh, I was blooming. I was going to focus on seed and reproducing myself. And now I've got to Form more flowers so I can get more seed because I want to reproduce. This is their natural thinking, their way they're programmed. And so encourage them to focus on setting more flowers and less on setting or producing seed, and you'll have a more beautiful plant. Now, some of the newer introductions of plants, some of the newer geraniums, newer uh, vincas, we have bred the ability for that plant to form seed. We've actually bred them so they focus more on, they self-prune themselves or self-deadhead or self Pinch the flowers. So when a new uh, calipricoa uh, is, is done blooming, or million bells petunia is another name for that, It's we've actually bred that so that it spreads out, puts long tendrils down, and when it's done blooming, it automatically dries up, drops off, and forms a new flower by itself. That's not for every plant. Some plants do actually need to be deadheaded or pinched by their gardener. So zinnias, beautiful summer flower. Great. We can start them by seed, by plants. Uh, animals, javelina, leave them alone. Uh, but it, they they really benefit from deadheading or cutting that off. This really goes into play for your perennial flowers because very few perennials, those plants that come back every year, self-prune or self-deadhead themselves. You have to actually go out there and do that for them. Annuals, the plants that are fabulous for a year and then they they're just, they're dead. They die in the winter. Those we've bred more to self prune themselves. The perennials, you'll need to focus in on that. So echinaceas, gallardias, rutabecchias, all, mainly all the things that have been in bloom for the summer. When that flower fades, just cut it off anywhere. I'll usually go back down to wherever the foliage is starting and I cut it right there. That's kind of the insider tip I can kind of leave you on with gardening. That'll make a tremendous difference for the rest of the season, right? I, I do that right through September, first part of October, and you'll get more and more and more flowers. A special invite to garden classes every Saturday. We have a free garden class here at 9.30 here at Waters Garden Center. Come. So they're there to kind of hang out with some fun people. This weekend, it's the best evergreens and how to plant them. Next weekend, next Saturday, it's it's uh, gardening for newcomers. So it's all the new, what are zones, what, uh, what, how does sun play out? How does wind? We've touched on a little bit of that here, but we go into an hour deep conversation on here's the best way to do that. And then this weekend, a special invite, Dancing for the Stars, not this weekend, next weekend, August 25th, 26th, I will be dancing. Yeah. So I've got a great dance going. I'm dancing for the Boys and Girls Club. They call it Dancing for the Stars. There's nine dancers. They partner us up with professional dancers because I'm not professional. And then we put us on stage. And right now I'm in the lead. I've got uh, just over $70,000 raised for the Boys and Girls Club. If you can't make it, consider a donation. Uh, donate it to Ken and Carrie. I get credit for it. So dancingforthestars.net. Throughout the week, Lisa and I camp out here at Waters Garden Center. We just love talking to fans of the show.